Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Fuji S5, alright? The Fuji S5 is one of the colour kings, if you believe the hype. You know, you've got your Canon 5D Classic, you've got your D200, you've got your Fuji S5, which is basically a remodeled D200. Uh, you've got, you know, the Pentax K models, you've got all sorts of stuff. Uh, the Fuji S5 is a little bit different than every other um old magic sauce <laughs> camera because it's got basically two sensors in one now that sounds a bit weird but it's basically the way the sensor is manufactured so as far as i know i could be getting this completely wrong guys but i'm trying my best the image comes out of the camera at a 45 degree angle and that is because basically the photosites instead of being in like a, a vertical and horizontal grid pattern it's sort of offset 45 degrees so the way the image is interpolated never quite matches up with the grids pattern of pixels you know what i mean so if you if you zoom into 100 percent on a canon 5d photograph for instance and you have a very very sharp line that's just ever so slightly not straight you do see a bit of that kind of aliasing uh grid pattern of the pixels because it because it's so sharp you can sort of zoom in and you say all oh, right okay that's where it's you know um whereas on the fuji s5 the image comes out soft because You'll know yourself in Lightroom, if you rotate an image and save it, it's not quite as sharp as if you didn't rotate the image. Um, I'm talking by a matter of degrees here, not like flipping the image 45 or 90 degrees, you know. Um, so yeah, that definitely has an impact on the uh, grain structure, on the texture, um, an overall feel of the image, it's, you know, it's the fact that it's not sharp. Um, but I'm going to come back to what I was saying about the two sensors in one thing. So it's also basically got... Uh, a bit like your eyes where you've got your rods and cones that are right next to each other that makes up the image we see this has basically got high sensitivity photosites and low sensitivity photosites and i think they they all run like alternate alternating you know along along the entire sensor so it's high low high low and um depending on the settings you have in the camera you can either capture the high sensitivity or the low sensitivity or you when you take in raw i believe it combines the two which is why you get quite an un un unexpected amount of dynamic range from a CCD of this era. Um, again, as you will probably know, if you're if you're a fan of these older cameras, the CCDs you tend tend to have very restricted dynamic range compared to um, even the earlier CMOS sensors. So you've really got to kind of uh, either bracket your photos or choose a very specific exposure range for, for that works for each shot. Like you know, you wouldn't be able to get. A nice blue sky that's detailed as well as a dark forest it's just you've got to pick one or the other um or bracket and that's what makes a lot of those cameras quite fun is the fact that not all the data is available to you uh, afterwards so you've got to choose more things in camera and you know it, it makes you think about your exposure a bit more but um anyway without further ado let's get into it so um we've got let's i always like looking at the greens that a camera can produce because it's often the hardest thing to do for a camera and it's in black and white <laughs> so um adobe color this is how the fuji s5 image comes into lightroom as standard so we're going to zoom out often i find if you've got your if you're viewing your image at a quarter resolution it's sharper than if you try and Fit. You might see the difference even on YouTube. There's a bit of a bit of a thing there. Um, so anyway, quarter resolution. Let's zoom into one to one, and you can immediately see we actually have sharpening on here. Believe it or not, let's turn that off, and you can see. Wow, it is not sharp. All right, and that is just something. That's not the lens. That is just kind of how it comes. Um, I mean, the lens isn't the best. It's it's the kit lens, the Nikon VR two. 18 to 55 mil which is as kit lenses go it's one of the sharpest so uh, that's a good test for this sensor is is this lens now another thing uh, I, i'm gonna i'm gonna swap back and forth between points quite a lot here by the way just depending on what i'm looking at and whatever so don't expect i've not written down points that i'm going to talk about but this camera translates to black and white very very well straight away um i think this probably is helped by the fact that there is such a big tone range uh such a big dynamic range compared to other cameras i'm used to shooting with you can retain absolutely everything almost and also you can push and 
the shadows are not that dirty. Because the data is captured high and low at the sensor, you've got a bit more push and pull. This is great, you know, you can, and then you can get quite sp specific with that, you know, if you like to do your dodging and burning, or I want this a bit darker over here and whatnot, it's because there is a nice big, to a nice big range on the camera, it doesn't tend to reveal too many issues when you when you do pull and push things quite a lot and the same goes for the color so let's actually just convert this to color for a bit so as it comes out of camera um i am actually not the hugest fan of how lightroom interprets this raw as is um obviously this is it's touted to be a color king well it's a color king but a lot of that is kind of how your raw editor interprets the photo, you know? Um, Canon 5D happens to... I did a video on that today as well, which you can check out. Canon 5D, Adobe Color looks fantastic with, like, almost bang on, but then other, other presets don't work so well, uh, whereas I think it's a bit of the opposite with this, actually. You import uh, using Adobe Color, and it just looks a bit flat, a bit, you know, it could do with some work. So um, so I'm going to switch to a family portrait here and we can get a look at some grades for the Fuji, okay? So again, let's put the, the quarter res. Let's reset and you can see that's a big difference <coughs> how the image comes out of camera and then my grade. In my opinion, you couldn't get away very easily with a grade like this on an older Canon. Um, you kind of have to work with what it gives you a bit more. The five D I know is a t is a ten bit output, and that does restrict the the level of um. I keep I'm, I keep saying pushing and pulling. I've got these like bloody catchphrases that I keep coming out with, man. But anyway, yes, you can do a lot of color work on this camera, which is really cool. You can see there two completely different grades, and both very different to what has come out of the camera as standard. Right. And I believe we've got some presets down here. I might stick them on Google Drive if anyone wants them. You've got this one here, the Portra 160 Punch. Portra Punch, sorry, that one. Flat. Cross Process and Portra Warm. These are all kind of variations on, a, on the Portra, obviously. Shocker, I know, Portra. Um, let's have a look at some others. Quite an interesting look here. I'm cl I'm clearly thinking 1950s with this kind of look, but you can obviously do many different many different looks. I want to try and find a photo that is a little bit blown out, and we can try and retain some highlights. Ah, yes, back at the start, I remember there was a blown out photo. So, whoa, let's reset. So. That's how, that's how it came out of camera, as you can see. All of that is clipped. Let's keep that on. Pulling it back, pulling it back, pulling it back. And the only thing we've lost is the very brightest highlights on the white car, yeah? You're not... R there is... It seems like there's a bit of a raw error, to be honest, with the way that... Like, if you pulled that down and it kept white as white, it still looked fine, but it sort of clips to pink, and it showed, and it, you know... Let's bring it up to where it's not pink anymore. And you can see, you'd never know. You, honestly, you would not ever know that this was not how it came out of camera. There's very little problems here. Like, if this was on my 5D, that whole side of the car would be white, and it wouldn't grade off. It wouldn't have a nice gradient to um, detail. It would have sort of an edge. Uh, like a posturized edge to it. And you can just see we're getting a little bit of that there, a little, little bit of it, but as you can see, the roll-off. And actually, the grain of the camera, I'm not sure if we've got grain turned on. No, this is no grain, but the camera itself has a fantastic structure. As you, as you zoom in close, I've still got my... Uh, there we go. Yeah, you can see how filmic that looks. And that's without any noise removal at all, no colour noise removal. You can do colour noise removal, but why Why bother? It takes away detail. Um, that's a little bit of a, an issue there, along that side. I think 
the more the more overexposed an image is, the grain does tend to. It's the you can sort of tell that we've lost a bit of detail there. Um, nothing you'd really notice at this you know magnification, but but yeah, you can see it deals with uh, highlights incredibly well. Um, I want to see if we've got any. Any underexposed areas we can try and boost now. Definitely not bad. There's de there's a bit of a colour shift towards green as it goes darker. That could just be my grade though. I'll just reset that. Yeah, if anything, it's the opposite way. It, it, you can see there's a bit of murkiness in the shadows and it starts to kind of have this purpley digital hue to it as it really loses detail, but I mean, we're pushing this five stops, you know, and there's still detail there. Let's go in, let's just make sure we're getting the true image here. So we'll turn off the detail, and this is what's coming out raw. No sharpening, no grain, no noise removal. Um, what I like about the way this camera delivers its grain is that there isn't any banding, not not until you're really pushing things there there is no banding at all the 5d i keep making that my reference because that is that's my other daily driver but the 5d you get red banding i can't remember if it's across the image or top to bottom but it really doesn't look nice this on the other hand it's a very even structure so even even when you're that's a nice that's a nice color palette there eh? that's that's where you go you know what this could be a color king Reset, and it's a little bit, you know what I mean? It, 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 all the the greatness is there, but you do need to tweak it a bit, you know, to get a bit more of a tone out of it. it just Adobe Color especially, it just tends to, there's too much contrast to the image, do you know what I mean? Everything pops a bit too much. Um, standard is a better jumping off point, I think, just because you've got a slightly flatter curve to the image. Uh, and then in terms of your greens and stuff like that, let's just see what I've done with this grade here. Minor edits to the calibration. I don't, I don't even know that you're going to see that, to be honest. But, 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 yeah. They're not too noticeable. And then in the colour tabs, this is where we've done bits and bats. Um... And you can see the saturation actually makes quite a big difference in Lightroom. Well, in anything. Um, look at that difference. So instead of... I'm going to reset the image, right? And instead of pulling down the saturation on everything, which makes the whole thing lose its impact, what we can do is reduce the saturation of specific colours that are a problem in the image. Luminance as well, that, kind of, that sort of thing. And you, you, you just get so much more control that way. That's a, that's a good tool, you know. So let's reset. I've lost my original grade now. How sad. Go back. There we go. So you can see quite a bright day, you know, quite a bright day. And it really is superb in this kind of weather. That's an interesting shot. Very much a lack of... This is straight out of the camera, by the way, and a little bit... Nothing's clipping, but it's all clearly very up the top of the spectrum. You know, there's not much separation here between the colours. This is where I struggle to to grade because if you if you pull it down it, it just looks weird like a cartoon so you've almost got to work with the fact that it's a bit blown out and push the colours in a way that sort of suits it a bit more which again <laughs> proving difficult but you can see with my grade wherever it is <laughs> I think we used for that one looks like the portrait flat pulled down a little bit 
yeah. So Portra, Portra Flat is a good one. Um, when you've got high contrast or high brightness scenes, instead of everything screaming out of the monitor at you like that, it just kind of takes things back a bit. Also works well on skin tones. Go to this one. And you see with the portrait flat, it actually. <laughs> I'm gonna put, I'm gonna say it again. This looks very Canon 5D ish. You could probably use these as an A and B camera setup with that kind of look to it. It would. It doesn't look far off from the 5D. In in fact, I would love to take both these cameras out with a similar focal range and <laughs> and just see the difference. This, I, I think, looking at these kind of pictures uh, at normal resolution without pixel peeping, I would say this has a more professional look than the Canon. And that is quite a general statement to make, but I think although the files do require a bit more work, I would say if I imported this image with the 5D or the 5D2 or maybe even the 7D, it would look a little bit more polished than 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 this does when you uh, import it straight in but with a bit of tweaking you really get such you, the sensor just sings honestly every everything has a texture although it's not sharp you can just see how it's captured everything you know but you don't want a pixel peep it's just it's just a different look a completely different look than the 5D. The 5D has more fine sharpness, more fine detail, whereas the Fuji S5 has obviously a bit of a rougher uh, detail and texture to it, but when you view that rougher detail zoomed out, it almost looks sharper. It's a, it's a funny sort of thing. There's not much in it. You can just see as well there how nice the shades are. I think that's is that just normal black and white? I mean, it looks like it looks like I've worked on that. It doesn't like look like I've just gone boom, black and white done. But it really does. It's very re rewarding if you start thinking in black and white with this camera and, and going, okay, yeah, this is this is going to really stand out. This one and um, the one thing I did, I really struggled with this picture. This picture here, we reset. You can see it's just, it's got that kind of cheap point and shoot look to it. Um, and in certain lighting situations where you've not got a lot of sunlight, this camera can have that kind of look to it sometimes. You know, like I say, I'm not looking at the JPEGs here, um, although I wasn't, to be honest. I'm going to break off a bit from that point. Um, people rave about the JPEGs from this camera. Uh, they are good. There is there is good colour tone there. I think nowhere near as nice as you can get with RAW. Like, you'd think there was some crazy secret sauce in the JPEGs. There really isn't. I've tried every single one. The landscape one is off by a million miles. Um, the, and, the, and there's a lot less tweaking than you can do with the X-Pro1 uh, and stuff like that and onwards. This is X. This is pre-X-Trans. This is, uh, what is it called? Some at CCD. Um... So yeah, you, you've not got a lot of control over the JPEGs, and they are soft. They, they are so soft. Um, so the raw shooting, still soft, but at least you get all the texture. Um, with the Fuji files, uh, J, with the Fuji JPEG, sorry, it just looks like there's just noise removal uh, out of the camera that you can't turn off, which is a shame. But yeah, anyway, coming back to this. So um, yeah, in in low light areas, especially areas that don't have amazing color information or a nice palette to begin with, it can look a bit garish and a little bit point and shoot. So you've got to be, you've got to be careful with how you grade these ones. And I think I probably again went for my portrait flat in this situation because it just has a way of cleaning up the shit pictures, <laughs> you know. Um, all the greens go towards that piney look that I'm a big fan of and all the browns take on the same sort of hue and you know there's just a bit more cohesion there whereas that does not work at all 
you know so so yeah that's just a little bit of a deep dive shall we say i think there's a, you know what there's a few more pictures here that i would like to look at that's a good one nice um nice example of the the light in the dark and how it deals with the the transition um let's try and save these leaves up here and you can see apart from a bit of the grain going weird and there's a few little speckled highlights that have that have blown through you can really choose how bright you want this image to be without it looking really really strange you know i mean we're pushing this three stops right let's get rid of rid of us detail and that is in the shadows the deep shadows there is no color noise i mean that is amazing pushing it three stops that's almost black at normal viewing even pushing five stops i'm not seeing a great amount of color noise so you know if you if you i was going to say astrophotography but if you like doing your low light and you're wanting something with a bit of character to it you don't just want to go straight for a sony or you know a more modern camera you want to save some money this would be a good contender for for your low light because um detail is still there and it doesn't just fall apart This is some great photography, this. Um, <laughs> it's quite a nice shot. Piney Greens, again, that's kind of my go-to look. I think that's probably that one, or the cross process or something. You can see these are my uh, these are my sort of newer, newer presets that I work with, and up here, these are like when I first got the camera. And you can see that there's just a very big change in the editing style. I mean... This is obviously a stronger style of an edit and, you know, doesn't tend to work as well on everything. That's all right. That's quite, that's quite interesting. But I've gone towards the more pastel 5DE look uh, with the Fuji as of recent times. Where's that image I really like? This one here, I mean, that looks like it could have been taken in any time period. I think it's probably because it's so clean, there's no cars on the road, there's no... You know what, let's, let's make it cleaner, let's, let's be cheeky. We didn't even... <laughs> nearly worked. You know what I'm trying to say, don't you? It's clean. No telltales. And it looks sharp. R looks really tack sharp, does this image, you know. Colours are slightly weird there with the Portrait 160. Definitely, you know, resetting. That's a strange colour to try and resolve against that, you know what I mean? It's not the nicest, and that's probably why I went for black and white. <laughs> Save myself the asshole. Um, but yeah, as you can see, zooming into one one to one, not sharp. Not sharp, so... If you're wanting to do like serious landscape work with this camera and blow it up, I would say anything beyond maybe even A4, to be honest. I mean, uh, my, mm, you'd, you know what? I think A3 is probably your limit with this camera. Uh, most people don't want to print past, you know, A4. So you, you, you're probably all right, but it's just if you want to do anything like professionally, you know, like having billboards made or anything, this is not the camera for you unless you did loads of um unless you did um what's the word a lot of panoramas and then you could stitch them all together and you'd get a higher megapixel look but just bear that in mind i guess and like i say this camera does need a bit of tweaking i mean this image here i do quite like the look of it. it's got a bit of a cross process bleach bypass look if you reset you can see yeah, it looks pretty it looks pretty crap you know what I mean? So you've got to, um, you do have to do a bit of tweaking with her, with the old girl. <laughs> uh, but once you once you get a look that you're happy with, honestly, this camera is very rewarding. Uh, it's built like a tank. Uh, it's got a few little creature comforts, I'd say, that, um, that the Canon 5D doesn't have. It's got a, a longer, 
a longer what the fuck what am i trying to say here your drive modes it's got more drive modes it's got slow it's got fast it's got um you can do a longer self timer up to 20 seconds your white balance your iso and your picture quality are all at the touch of a button on top rather than having to go into menu um or do a button and then a button you know it's all there for you um it's got yeah it's got on the body you can change it from single shot continuous or manual focus which is quite cool although i do knock it sometimes and think i've broken the camera it's got um flash power up and down on a button on the camera uh you can change the focus type from single point you know partial or full whatever it is with the with this little multi switch here so you don't have to go into any other settings basically to do the majority of your work on the on on this on this camera one thing i will say um is this is re this camera really shows its age in the menus uh controls and functions are all over the place you've really got to kind of there's a there's not just one menu there's a met there's a menu and then there's a setup and they both show different things um you know your setup has things like your button assignment your maintenance options system information but then it also has stuff for autofocus exposures you know so there's there's a lot of different things thrown in there the menu itself you can put change your film simulation if you're shooting jpeg um you can change your iso again in the menu even though you've got it on the top screen you can do your white balance fine tune uh size of the image you can do the noise reduction right but you can only choose between organic and standard so there is no option to turn the noise reduction off uh which would turn the jpegs from being shite to usable so it's a bit of a shame is that um you do get the most terrible live view ever like it's 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 like three fps pixelated to the to the nth degree just not worth using to be honest with you um you do have a few options through looking through the viewfinder you can you can do things like change where the, dis the display po uh display points are uh shown you can turn on and off a grid over the viewfinder which is quite cool if you if you're doing architecturally stuff or stuff where you need perfect geometry uh all that's pretty cool um there's no there's no um jog wheel like there is on the cannons and i often find myself r reaching for what for it when it's not there and that's one thing i do quite like about the cannon setup is you've got that big jog wheel right next to the screen right where your thumb sits uh, on the Fuji S5, it's not too di uh, different. You've basically got two of the Canon Focus. Uh, sorry, where, where uh, on the front you've got a dial, a roller that changes the shutter speed on a Canon, and you've basically got two of those on the Fuji. So you've got one where your thumb sits, or next to where your thumb sits, and one where your index finger sits next to the shutter. So you've you've still got very fast access to uh, aperture and shutter speed, but it's just a bit different. Um, I'd say both of them have a fantastic ergonomic um, and probably I'd say the Fuji I could actually use for longer you know it's got a it's a bit more compact uh, and the weight of the camera feels a bit more balanced whereas it, a lot of a lot of times with the with the 5d um, your lens is I mean this is, this is user dependent but the, the 5d can feel a bit un, unbalanced with certain lenses on with my 80 to 200 mil i mean bloody hell it's like yeah <laughs> it's like carrying a broom pole right at the end and it's like <laughs> it's really really interesting but um but yeah so um this is kind of a bit of a it's ended up being a comparison with this against the 5d except i've not shown you any 5d photos but i'm hoping that the type of people that will watch this you know they're interested in buying either one you might want to see a bit more of a comparison next time so i can do that but Thank you for watching and I will see you again soon.